We have faith, right? Praise the Lord. Exodus 23. Ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor to be barren in the, thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. You see what that says there? That's in the Old Testament. The I like to call it Older Testament. And that ye shall serve, uh, in some places it talks more about it, following the Lord, obeying his commandments and doing his will. Then he shall do this, all right? It's a wonderful covenant with his people. And Hebrews 8, 6 says, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, Yeshua, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Now, if you read that Exodus 23, how can you get much better than that? Get the point I'm making? So if we, should we not that much more if we walk in his ways and, do, and, and uh, follow after him and the Holy Spirit? Should we not also be walking in health? Should we also not be, be uh, having all these... Uh, Goodness, that the sickness be taken away, that our bread is blessed, easy for me to say, and our water is blessed, and that we are blessed people. Hebrews 12, 24, it says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. It is now through the blood of Yeshua, and not through the blood of animals. And yet they had that covenant with him that he said if the, he, they walk in his ways, he would bring health to their bodies, that he would not allow sickness to come in. That should build our faith right there. Hallelujah. So as we walk in Yeshua in a better covenant than we should be expecting, or we should have faith in that we can walk in health and, and prosper and, and uh, everything around us, operates properly, right? Now look at something else. Well, wait a minute. Uh, we have looked at different things the last two Sabbaths. This faith message is probably not necessarily one that is usually taught in a more Hebraic uh, root style church, but it's gospel, it's, it's scripture, it's what Jesus said. And what he says is awesome. We've looked at different things <clears throat> since every one of us have faith. It says we all have been granted a measure of faith. So don't tell anybody you don't have any faith. You have faith, right? The Bible says you have faith. So you have faith. No, I'm just kidding. But, but we all have faith. Uh, we can and should have ever increasing faith. The Bible talks about that as our faith is being increased. Where to have real faith is heart faith. It's faith that comes in here. It's not just something that we bring up in here. It's something that we know. It's heart faith. Another thing we, we saw in Mark, Mark 11 and 25, I believe it was, that we have to walk in forgiveness for him to forgive us. And so we need to forgive others. We need to have a forgiving lifestyle to where we don't hold any grudges or anything because that can keep us from, from uh, receiving from God. Now let's look at something else in Mark 11. You didn't know there was this much stuff in Mark 11, did you? Hallelujah. Mark eleven twenty three 23, it says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. This is Yeshua speaking. And it's, it's uh, if you just read that and think, this can, how can this be? How, how can we walk in the, at this level? But notice how it says the word saith or say three times. 
And it only says believe once. So we need so we need to say things, correct? You believe in your heart that the words you speak will come to pass. Whether it's casting out devils, whether it's praying for the sick, or whether it's accepting Jesus as your savior, you speak it with your mouth. You speak forth the things. Proverbs 6, 2 says, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. So it's like the words that you speak uh, can come back to ensnare you because you're saying the wrong things. Were they, yes. Yes, I think we need to say it out loud. It doesn't mean that we got to shout it out, but I think we need to say it loud enough for the devil to hear it. And I think it increases your faith in as you speak it forth. I don't think you need to shout to cast out a demon. They're not hard of hearing, they can hear. But sometimes it makes us feel better when we shout because we think we're really doing it. <laughs> but yes, I believe it's important to speak it because he says, he says, if you say, he doesn't say, if you just believe. He says, if you say these things, you know, a lot of times we blame the, the devil for our problems. And we know he's out there, he's, he's trying to get us and all this kind of stuff. But we blame him for our problems when most generally, it's probably that little instrument that's right inside of your mouth that's causing you a lot of problems. Because it's the thing that we say. What I say the other week is it's like the things that you speak today, you will be living tomorrow. Now, I believe, I believe just because you say something once doesn't mean it. I think it's a, it's a pattern. It's a, it's a lifestyle of how you speak. Are you always speaking negatively or are you always speaking positively? Are you speaking from the natural realm or from the godly realm? And so I think that sets the pattern. I don't think just saying something one time doesn't mean that you're going to be living that. You understand what I mean? It's, it, it's like it says, liars will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I think that means an habitual liar that keeps lying all the time. So it's what we continue to speak. So the mouth can be the problem. Instead of being failure conscious, we need to become more God conscious. I remember one of the guys that worked for us, he told me that, David, you're so negative. It's like I'm going, I am? I mean, see, my negative, how I see my negative is just being real. You know, somebody says something like, ah, I don't think that'll work. And it's like, you're just so negative, you know, but instead of saying, oh, that won't work. So I said, well, let's see if we, how we can make this work would be turning it around instead of just saying, oh, that won't work or whatever. But I started trying to listen to myself. And yes, I am kind of a negative type person. It's somehow, for some reason, it seems to be easier to be negative than it is to be positive all the time. Am I the only one that works that way? So as I keep speaking these things, that keeps flowing. <clears throat> and being God conscious, what I have to be remembering is that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. See, we, we look at us in, in the natural and uh, the things that we could do, and, uh, and then we become negative because, I mean, we, we kind of know what we can do in the natural and other things that just seem like, you, 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 we just can't do it. But let's look at the children out in the wilderness. They were there for 40 years because of what they said and what they believed. They believed it and they said it, right? You know, sometimes we keep, we look back uh, at the children of Israel that they were promised the promised land. That's why it's called the promised land. So they were promised the promised land to go in there. And then when they get there, they say, we can't do it. And it's like, so we kind of look down our nose and it's like, well, God promised Abraham 
that he would go in there. I mean, for over 400 years before that. And also you read in Exodus where God said, I will take you to the promised land. I'm going to give you the promised land. So they were just told that also. And so they go from Mount Sinai and they go right up to the to where they would cross the I believe the Jordan to go into the promised land. And uh, so God told them to send in 12 spies. And so 12 spies go in, they're in there for 40 days, and they're looking at the place and looking at everything. And uh, so uh, they come back, and uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to make the point about that was looking, looking as if, why didn't you go in there? God had already told you to do that. And how many things has God told us that we can do that we haven't done, and yet we look down our nose at them when... Uh, we haven't actually walked out what the Bible says. He says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you're going to do X, Y, Z. So it's like I can put myself in, this, in, in, in that uh, and say, well, why aren't I walking fully in what God promised me? You know, but I think that because they didn't walk fully in what God, God promised them, you know, this, we're all human beings. And Kate, that's a, that's a new revelation, right? So we, we tend to look at things in the natural instead of looking at what, what God said. So 12 spies, they came back. They all agreed the land was wonderful. The land was great. And, and uh, that it was had fruit. They brought some fruit back. And we've, that's kind of our emblem for Carmel is, is Joshua and Caleb, you know, with the stick between them. And they got this huge cluster of grapes, you know. I mean, everything is, is huge. And they, they all agree it's wonderful land. And, but then uh, the 12 spies, they brought up the giant, or the 10 spies, they brought up, well, there's giants in the land. We can't go in there. And, uh, and so all the people started murmuring and complaining. And then Joshua, or Caleb, got up, and he stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome that. Why do two? Why does the Joshua and Caleb? Why do they think we can well go in there and take take over, and the ten couldn't? God will tell us why in just a little bit. But the men that went up with him said, "We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we." So then they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. There's giants in the land. We can't go in there. There's giants. We saw them. Well, God promised you that you'd have. That we saw the giants, and we, we, you know, I can't go in against a guy that's as high as that light. I mean, what am I going to do? I'm going to take on somebody that's, that's, you know, way taller than me. You know all the story, but it's well, what I want to point out is evil report. Isn't that interesting? It says, and they brought up an evil report of the land. Now they they brought all the fruit. They said it was a good land, it was good and all that, but they said there was giants in the land. And in the Bible, it says that it was an evil report. How was it an evil report? It didn't line up with what God said. Do we line up our words with what God says? Do we speak evil reports? I'm sure I do. But it didn't like it was full of doubt, not faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. They couldn't they didn't please God by saying this because they're saying we can't do it. God had already said that they could. Then in Numbers 14, 8, he says, if Caleb says, if the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Now that's faith speaking. He's calling the things that are not as though they were. They hadn't taken it yet, but he's saying, we got it. We can take it. We're, that's not a problem. If God delights in us, God has asked us to do this, then we can go do it. 
He's full of faith. Hallelujah. He saw all the miracles. He saw all the things that had happened, how they got from point A in Egypt all the way to the, there by the promised land. They saw all those things that God did. And yet then all of a sudden they think they're supposed to do it themselves. God, did, did they themselves go through the, through the water? Did they part the water? Did they, did they you know, do all the miracles that happened? The, 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 uh, the, the things that God put on him, on the people, the lice and the grasshoppers and all that. Did they have anything to do with that? So why, why can't they now say, you know, God, with God, we can do this. this. That's what Joshua and Caleb were saying, that with God, we can do it because we saw what he can do. Hallelujah. How many times do we go through things and we, and we say, wow, that was God. Then the next time we come to something again, it's like, how are we going to get through this? And then after it's over with, it's like, wow, God did that. You know, because, you know, so we got to look at it in, in the natural realm. <clears throat> And later on in scriptures known as slander, whispering, defaming, slander, defaming, slandering. Slanderous. So like think about the the spies that came back, they were probably whispering among the people, defaming mm -hmm. the good spies, defaming what Moses and the Lord wanted to do. Right. Instead, they were kind of, right, because they came against them, so they like they were shouting a bad report, they were kind of like right. a stir amongst the people. Right. That's a bad report. Bad, evil. Yes, it's an evil report. They were turning the people against uh, Joshua and Caleb. But I, I like, uh, but when Caleb is speaking, he's releasing his faith. He's believing what God said he could do. And he, remember the words can ensnare you? These boys had... Heart faith, not head faith. They were not looking at things in the natural. When you see the giant, there's a giant there. But in the, in, the, in the natural, I can't defeat him. But when I look at it, who's greater that's in me than he is in the world, then I can take that giant down. I can remove that mountain that's in, my, in the way. But guess who got to go into the promised land? Joshua and Caleb because they spoke good things. They said, we can do this. We can go in there. And they did. Hallelujah. Numbers 24, God speaking. But my servant Caleb, because he had an other spirit with him, hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land wherein he went, and his seed shall possess it. So as I said, he called what was not as though it were. And 40 years later, Caleb and Joshua go into the promised land. The other 10, where are they at? They're gone. They died in the wilderness. And I love this. Uh, I, I like this in Joshua 14. So Caleb now is, uh, let's say he was 20 years old when he went in as a spy. I don't know how old he was, but my guess he's at least 20 years old. And uh, the... Uh, so he was 40 years in the wilderness, so he's 60. 60 years old now. And he comes to Joshua. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. He's going to throw this mountain into the sea. Give me this mountain whereof of the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardst in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Don't you love that spirit? I mean, he's coming and asking for the very place where the big giants were that the others said they couldn't go in and get him. He wants that giant. It's like... It's almost like, you know, just let me at him because God is on my side and I'm going to throw him out. Hallelujah. That's how we have to, we need to be going after the, the enemy of our souls. It's trying to destroy us. We need to go after him and, and, and uh, bring the kingdom of God into it. 
Caleb and Joshua saw the same thing, but they saw it through the lens of what God had promised them. So if God delights in us, he will give us the land, and the Lord delights in you. He wants to give you the land, the things that he has said in his word. Amen. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So with the heart we believe, and it's throughout the scriptures, with the heart we believe, and with the mouth confession is made. So we speak it forth. Hallelujah. So you don't just believe it, you need to say it. Give voice to it. Your mind thinks a lot of things. Aren't you glad that just because you think something, you don't get it? Hallelujah. It's not what your mind thinks. It's what your heart is, where your heart is. So saying it is very important to receiving it. So Yeshua doesn't say that whatever you believe, you will have. He says, whatever you believe in your heart and saith. Hallelujah. Then in Mark eleven twenty four, he says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now here he's talking about prayer. He says, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them. Therefore is in the beginning of this, of this verse. So again, we ask, what is therefore there for? Why does it say therefore? Because it's because of something that he said right before that. He said, verily I say unto you, you've heard this many times now, that whatsoever, whosoever, whosoever, which means you, doesn't mean just the disciples, he says whosoever, and he told the disciples to teach the rest of the people everything that he taught them. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So it's back to we ought to say. But he says what? Then he says, Therefore, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, well, this is more when you're having a prayer, not necessarily speaking it out, I think. But because of what he says in verse 23, therefore, when we pray, desire that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, that's, that's out there. This is Yeshua speaking. When we pray, yeah. So maybe moving a mountain might not be glorifying the Lord today, but maybe right. something else would be. Right. What well, needs to be based on the Word of God? Yeah. If the Word of God promises you something or not, and we'll kind of get to that. So you can get carried away with this thing, also, where you're out there claiming a whole lot of stuff that God doesn't necessarily. And we'll get there. Jesus, when he cursed the fig tree, was not praying. He was just speaking forth. He just said it. You know, and I don't know why he cursed the fig tree. I don't know if he got out of the wrong side of bed that morning or what happened there. <laughs> but, you know, it says he looked on and there was no fruit there or whatever. And it's just, it's just well, curse that thing. You know, but I mean, my guess is that he wanted to teach them something. And that's what he's teaching them. This whole thing of, of speaking forth. Uh, Anyway, we're going to get there too. Maybe the time is moving right along. But Jesus in the Lord's Prayer, after honoring his name, then he goes into give us this day our daily bread, forgive our sins, deliver us from the evil one. We need to do the same thing with that. We actually release our faith when we pray that, believing that is so, and we shall have what we, we pray. Right. It's it's not all just for health. It's not all just for finances. It's not all just for this and that. But we need to pray, you know, whatever we pray, do we really from our heart? Do we stand in faith, believing we receive it? See, we all have faith to live the next day. 
or today. I mean, we all, I had faith before I got saved. I had faith that I was going to live the next day or I would have gotten saved before. <laughs> you know, so some of the things, you know, it's like when I had my quadruple bypass, I was thinking, how do people go through this that don't know uh, the Lord? Because to, to, to me, if I, if, I, if I would have died, you know, I would have been in heaven. But if I wouldn't have made it and I wasn't saved, didn't have the Lord, I wouldn't be in heaven. I'd be in hell. And so it's like, how can you, how could you at peace? I had, I, was I scared? Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had fear, but I had peace kind of at the same time. Uh, it wasn't like I was, you know, whatever. I just thought, well, if it's my time to go, then I guess I'm out of here. And if not, then I'll stick around for a while. Amen. It's that way I can keep pestering Ruth. <laughs> and Alina. I haven't done a good, very good job picking on her today. Uh, <laughs> so we need to we need to uh, believe that we receive them in order to be able to have them. It might come in handy if the powers that be continue trying to destroy uh, America, which, which what they're working on seems like. Uh, so whether it's food or finances, this is how the kingdom works. We ask, believe, and we receive. Now, I don't believe that, that Jesus is a big Santa Claus up in the sky just throwing out stuff to us whenever we ask for it. You know, this all needs to be, this all needs to be based in the word of God. When you, when you decide you're going to pray and believe and stand for something, you need to look at the scriptures and find it in the scriptures and then say, okay, because the scripture says this, then, then uh, it's mine. David says, don't forget the benefits. It's not necessarily so I can have a Porsche sitting in my garage uh, type of thing. We can get off the rails with, with some of this stuff, but I believe he wants us to prosper. Hallelujah. Because what it says in the Bible, it says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He will supply all of our needs. And that, that takes quite a bit of needs and food for Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but he says he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. We stand on that word. He will supply all of our needs. Then James 1 says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, or that word could be doubting, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed, for let that not man not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So he's kind of saying the same thing that Jesus did. He doesn't talk about uh, believing in your heart, but he says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering or not doubting, believing that you receive what you, what you pray for. But then he also says, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. But in verse six and seven, it looks like he's lining up with what Jesus said about asking and receiving. Hallelujah. So I see this as kingdom building things that we that we need, the needs that we have to live to, and be prosperous and healthy. He wants us to be prosperous and he wants us to be healthy. Hallelujah. If he wants it in the, in the older testament, he should surely want it what, since we have a better covenant than what they had yet. As we go forth as warriors for the kingdom, we need to know what is, who is God and what is of the devil. A lot of times we, we blame the devil for stuff that, that we get into ourselves. But uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So according to 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, uh, God is, Jehovah is not the God of this world. Does everybody understand that? So he's, he's not, it's a tricky, tricky thing because God 
can overrule anything in the world at any time, but God is, uh, is uh, or Satan is the God of this world. All you gotta do is look out there and see what's going on out there. That's not God out there. You know, when you watch the Emmys and you see them doing devil worship, that's not God. That's not what God wants and wills for his people, but he allows it to happen. He created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden and gave Adam dominion over all the work that God has created. He was to run it. He was to rule over it. He was the one that was in charge. He was the one that was, was, uh, was responsible to, to make everything work out right. But he committed treason and sold out to the devil and gave him rulership. But like I said, that does not mean that God is not a supreme being, that God is, is not sovereign. He's still a sovereign God. But he, he set it up for where we have free will. You know, we read in our history that men rise up in power and they kill millions of people and all this. That's not God's will. You know, you hear, how can God let, let that happen? Well, he gave us free will and, and uh, we don't know exactly everything, why, why this happens and why that happened and how that could happen. How a person, when you're walking in love and, and it, it, a lot of the... A lot of us, like for me, when I heard about child trafficking and I heard about this and that, it's like I just kind of let it go because I can't believe that people actually do those things that they're saying they do. I mean, if you have a heart of love, how could anybody do that? And it's like you throw it out thinking, oh, that's just, it's not real. But, but it is real. And that man's heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it, the Bible says. And so it's, it's just amazing. I mean, I've seen on TV where these people were laying there and this guy was kicking them and hitting them and there was blood over the walls and this and that. And I don't want to get too carried away here, but, but it's like, and I'm there and it's like in my flesh, I rose up and it's like, I, I, if I'd had a gun, I'd have shot him. I might have shot my TV or something. I don't know. Because for somebody to treat another person that way, it's, it's like, how, how do you do that? You know, especially since they're just... They're just people. I mean, it's not like those people were trying to hurt them or whatever. It's just because they're not of the same religion or the same whatever. It's like, how can you do those things? So when bad things happen, people blame God instead of the one Jesus blames. This is Jesus, who he says it is. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. So who causes sickness, storms, catastrophes, and earthquakes? It's the thief. It's Satan that causes these things to happen. According to what Jesus said, it is the evil one. And then in John 14, he says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. So when Jesus, coming back to Patrick's uh, storm, uh, so when Jesus was out in the boat, and, and the, the uh, storm was coming, and the waves were coming in, and they wake up, we're all going to perish, you know, whatever. And he gets up, and he says, Peace, be still. So if that would have been, that storm was from God, it would be, he was telling God to be still. Okay, yeah. He'd be coming against what God has established or done. I've already heard that they had a storm when they were going to the Gadarenes and the enemy was trying to keep them from, from arriving at that point because he didn't want them to, uh, to come in there. Or when he healed all those people that were around him, the father that dwells in me, he says, do us the work. So if he's healing all these sick people that God put this sickness on them, then he would be, he would be coming against God and healing the sick. You follow that line of thinking? Well, that should make sense to most Christians because they think that Jesus was against God. That would, be, that would make sense. Yeah. I don't know that most people think Jesus was against well, God. Must. Why? He came to do away with everything that God set up. Oh, he abolished God's yeah. law. Yeah. But he must be against God. That would be Sorry. 
But he would have been working against himself because he said he's doing the Father that dwelleth in me. He's the one that's doing this work. Well, he said in Mark 3, and he called them unto him and said unto them in parable, he says, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So if, if God is sending sickness on people in order, to, in order to bring them closer to himself, he's working against God in healing them instead of allowing the sickness to do what God sent it to do. I've, I've heard I've, I've heard people say, you know, it's like this sickness has really brought our family together. We're, we're really blessed now. And it can because God can take God can take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it to good. So so he can do that and turn it around for that. But God didn't send the disease in the first place. If you're walking, I believe, a Christian upright life, I don't think he's going to be sending those things. Why? Because of John 10, 10. Well, he said, I have come to bring life and abundant life. That's his desire for you and I is to walk in health. Hallelujah. And I'm all for it. Amen. Me too. <laughs> so, and I'm not, I'm not teaching this because I've arrived in my faith. Uh, I'm working on it. I want my faith to be ever increasing. I mean, I've got, I've got things in my body that, uh, that are not the way they were designed to operate and work, and I'm standing believing that I am healed. By his stripes, ye were healed. So I'm not standing up here thinking, don't think that I've got everything figured out uh, totally. I'm trying to go by what God says in the word. I'm not just giving you my, my opinion about something. Hallelujah. He's not against God. And in Luke 13, 16, he says, Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, he be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? He nails it. Who the problem is, who's, who's behind what the, pro what the problem was that the woman had? He says, Satan hath bound her. So all the things we see happening out there, they're not necessarily God's will. What we saw on the Emmys was not God's will, but somehow he allows it. They're, they're just lucky I'm not God. I would have had a tornado go through that thing right at the time, although tornadoes are from Satan, but I could have probably finagled Satan in order to run one through there right at that time. Hallelujah. So if we, if we fall out of a tree and break our leg, you know, we can blame God because he, because he uh, made uh, no the, the gravity. He 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 did gravity. So if he wouldn't have put that gravity there, I wouldn't have fell down and broke my leg. Well, if he wouldn't have given us gravity, we'd all be floating out in outer space somewhere. So we're glad for that. But there's natural causes. Accidents can happen. There's things, you know, we can still pray, that, you know, for traveling mercies and all these kinds of things. But there's things that do happen somehow. Why, I don't know. You know, there's times that I've thought I was going to wreck and didn't. And I still don't know how I didn't. But uh, I think it was God who was protecting me. He, he can do that. He can step in at any time. You know, just because God is, because Satan is the God of this world, and we and we see that again in uh, Matthew, where Jesus went out into uh, uh, after he was baptized, he went up, and Satan told him that he would give him uh, all the, you know, sovereign over over the country, over the city, however he said it, and Jesus didn't didn't say no, you don't have that. That it's not that you don't uh, you don't you can't give it to me because I you know. I already have it. No, he was given. He didn't. He didn't argue the the point because he knew it was true that he was the god of of this world. And so, now the good now the good thing that comes from this. Because uh, we know that people say things sometimes when something happens to somebody. It's like we had a miscarriage. And then somebody told us that because we're sinners, 
that that that's probably why. So so there is that mindset out there that be, well, you know. So if you get sick, you think, well, I sinned or didn't. No, we live in a natural world, and He's given us the faith and the. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So we read the word on healing, and then he's given us the the uh, the method of how to to receive healing for our bodies. Hallelujah. In Acts one eight. This is how God decides. Jesus decides he's going to go after Satan now. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Why do you need the power? Why is power going to come upon you? Hallelujah. Because you're a warrior. You need power. You need the Holy Spirit inside of you to, to rise up and take over. As Mark 16 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. This is why power has come upon you to operate in the spirit realm. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So why is, why, why is this in here? But we have received the power because he wants us to come against the works of the enemy. So it's all these things that he says that we're, we are to do. We are to cast out devils, we are to speak in new tongues, they take up serpents and drink, and, and uh, they shall recover. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is all coming against what the enemy is setting up in this, in this world. He wants, he wants us to come after these things because we are to take back the kingdom. Actually, it says that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, and God told him to sit there until he makes his enemies a footstool. I mean, there's people that have built a whole religion on that and kingdom theology teaching. They believe that everything is going to come to God or everybody's going to turn to God and then God's going to come back. Jesus is going to come back. And that's all a good thought, but I don't see any of that happening. It's becoming uh, more evil all the time. The evil is becoming more evil, and the, the Christians right now, with the revival going on, are going to stand up, and they're going to shine that much brighter to, over, to, to overcome what's going on out there. And we need to understand how to, to cast out demons and do all those things, because I tell you, when the, when the world starts coming to the Lord, we're, we're, they're going to need a lot of deliverance with the things that's going on out there. Uh, Hallelujah. But the Father is the supreme commander. Jehovah dwells in us also, as he, Jesus said that the Father dwells in us. And John, Jesus said that I and the Father will come and dwell in you. So the Father dwells in us also for what? To do the works that Jesus did. To do the works that he's empowered us to do. Hallelujah to continue destroying the works of the enemy. So Jesus was here doing the works and destroying the works of the enemy. So those are his works, and we need to know who the enemy is so that we can come against the enemy. We need to not blame God for things that the enemy is doing. Remember, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We see the giants, but greater is he that is that is in us and he that is in the world. Financially, I don't know how in the world I'm going to make it, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You know, I don't know how my family is going to come into to know to, to come into the Lord, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And he can take my words that I speak to them and 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 on the, while they're sleeping, that word keeps churning in there until it produces fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Enough said. I think I gave you a mouthful. Uh, just remember, the Old Testament promised them healing. We have a better covenant yet than what they did. We have a better covenant. Hopefully that builds your faith. It's like, yes, amen. We have a better, we have a better covenant than they did because it's Yeshua that's standing was sacrificed, not the sacrifices of an animal. So warriors, be released.
and go out and destroy the works of the enemy. And we know what the works of the enemy are, right? John 10.10 10 tells us what it is. The thief comes to steal, kill, maim, destroy. I have come, Jesus have come to give us life and life more abundantly. He wants us to live an abundant life. Doesn't say extravagant, although abundantly probably means that, but we should not be having lack because our faith, we receive what we need. Amen. And we need to eat some food. We had a whole lot of food now for the spirit man. Now we need food for the physical man. Hallelujah. Peace. Yes. Father God, we just lift up the people of East Palestine. Lord God, we ask, Father, for your presence to be made manifest there. I pray, Father, for miracles to be released over that place. I pray, Father God, that any any uh, water that they drink will not harm them. Yes. Any, any breathing of uh, the toxic fumes that are, are there, will not harm them. We pray, Father, for the people, Lord God, that they, that they would prosper and be in good health. We just bless you and we thank you for it, Father. In Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the ones that are on Zoom. Wish you were here, but you are here. In a way. Amen. Pray that this, these faith messages has have uh, lifted you up to new heights in thinking about it. We all have faith. We all need to have our faith increased. I need my faith increased. And because uh, I don't believe that that uh, caveman there should have to stand up and stretch and, and do all those things. Amen. Amen. But I know as, as we get older, uh, somehow, the bones don't want to cooperate, but we speak life to those bones. They're going to work. We're going to be like like a Caleb and say, I'm just as strong now as I ever was. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this food that we're about to consume. Lord, I, I just pray that it be sanctified in Jesus' name, that it bring health to our bones, that it bring life, that it bring strength to our bones. Thank you, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Everyone be blessed.